Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. Today we're going to be talking about what makes a quality reproduction Richmond Depot Type 2 jacket with Dan Wambaugh. Dan, tell me a little bit about the Richmond Depot jacket and Type 2, and I guess really before we get started with that, we should talk a little bit about the name. Yeah, uh, by far the uh, Richmond Depot in, in Richmond was uh, the number one supplier to the Army Northern Virginia uh, throughout the war. And um, the, the Type 2 jacket, as we call it, has become kind of the mainstay uh, for Confederate infantry portrayal. And um, the reason that is is because based on uh, evidence from late 1862 up till the end of the war, they wore jackets similar or identical to these. So it covers so many bases that a lot of reenactors prefer to get a Type 2. However, the typology of it, we call it the Type 2, is something that would be completely unknown to an original Civil War soldier. If you, if you walked into their camp and said, you know, oh, you've all got Type 2s, they wouldn't know what the heck you were talking about. Um, the typology was established by Les Jensen in a 1989 article in the company Military Historian's Journal. Um, he identified three distinct types of, of the basic pattern of a Richmond Depot jacket. Uh, the Type 1 has epaulets and it has belt loops, but it's also trimmed along the collar, the epaulets, the cuffs. Okay. Um, this is kind of an early war feature, um, some of the first units receiving clothing from the Richmond Depot Virginia troops uh, had uniforms of this style. As the war progressed, um, it became much more important to clothe the troops than to quite make them look with all the embellishments, mm -hmm. so they simply deleted the, uh, the, the, all the trim. Now, a lot of reenactors use this, they buy that Type 2, and if they're going to an early war event, they add the trim on themselves and take them off after the weekend's over. It's a very slick way of kind of stretching your dollar. Um, as the war goes on and we get into late 63 on into early 64, the, uh, the Richmond Depot, again, is now stretching uh, its fabric usage to the absolute limit. They're running out of wool materials, so they completely delete the epaulets, they completely delete the belt loops, and a lot of the collars get lowered significantly. So areas where they can kind of cut costs, they do, and they, they cut those corners. What should I look for as far as a pattern goes if I'm shopping for that versatile type two? Basically, a, a good Richmond Depot will have a six-piece body, a two-piece sleeve. Uh, one of the salient features is the sleeves have a very wide elbow, and this was considered stylish of the time. Uh, of course, the Confederates used the jacket because it saved fabric. They could equip more troops from, say, a hundred-yard piece of fabric than the Union could with especially a frock coat or even a sack coat. So this, this is a material-saving effort, but it also made them more fashionable. The jackets were coming in, um, not so much the Union clothing. And uh, so as far as the patterns go, uh, a lot of the patterns out there are pretty darn good. Um, there's not a lot of uh, um, reproductions out there that are horrible based solely on the patterns. Um, one of the considerations that we always have to make when evaluating, especially Confederate clothing, is uh, concessions are often made in the patterning for our kind of modern shapes. Like me, I would not be an authentic Confederate soldier. As, as Shelby Foote called them, he called them the Scarecrow Infantry. Mm -hmm. These guys were thin. So as far as patterns go, a lot of what's out there is very good, um, especially because you have to make concessions for modern sizes. How about construction? Now, construction's where it gets very important. Um, you can look at a rack and immediately tell is this an authentic uh, uh, Richmond Depot as opposed to an unauthentic one? And that's, that's where it starts to get easier. Um, the originals were entirely hand-sewn. There were a few um, kind of unique examples where they did exhibit some machine sewing, but by and large, especially for the, the most common, set, uh, common Richmond Depot jacket, it should be hand-sewn. Now, in a reproduction, that's not always possible with... Um, with, uh, you know, every reproduction is not entirely hand-sewn. There are certain features like the seams where the hidden stuff where that can be machine sewn and you can still look at it outwardly and see all hand stitching. So that's usually a cost-saving measure and, and by we sell a hundred of that kind of, set, uh, that kind of jacket 
compared to, you know, for every one entirely hand-sewn one that we do. But look, you know, is the top stitching, the stitching at the edge of the coat, is this hand-sewn? Are the stitches nice and close together? Um, are the buttonholes hand-sewn? All the exposed stitching, all the top stitching on the, 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 the collar, the epaulets, the cuffs, everything should be hand-sewn, and not just the stuff on the outside, but the stuff on the inside as well. If you open it up, is that pocket hand sewn. Any exposed stitch that you see, even when you open up the coat, is it hand sewn? That's, that's an important feature to look that makes it an authentic Richmond Depot jacket. You really should have to start taking a pair of scissors or a seam ripper and start taking it apart before you should see any of that machine sewing. Okay. Good tips. Now, material. I see some different material here. The most common by far was jean cloth, which is a wool cotton blend. It uh, was an idea, you know, by the South to, uh, to stretch their limited wool supplies to the absolute limit. But before the war, jean cloth was considered an incredibly low class material, um, but it was highly durable. It could use a lot of cotton and therefore made it, made it a good use for the Army. So early to mid, even some late war garments would be made out of jean cloth. This particular jacket is made out of a type of jean cloth known as casimir. Um, casimir is just one of, of a numerous type that have the same cotton and wool content that, uh, that a regular jean cloth would have. It just appears the same on both the front and the back. Um, as the war wore on, the South, South's uh, wool supplies absolutely dwindled to nothing and they began importing large quantities of fabrics from overseas. So you'll often see a pattern Richmond Depot jacket made out of a material such as this, which we, we call English Army Cloth. It's 100% wool, it's very high quality, and a lot of surviving Confederate jackets are made out of material similar to this because, again, that's a late war jacket and it might have been what the soldier wore home and got preserved rather than worn out like a, like a jean cloth. So um, this actually, you know, is, is much higher quality than, than the jean or the casimir or anything like that. And uh, so some of the Confederates, you know, as the war wore on in 64 and 65, were wearing higher quality jackets than they were initially, which is interesting. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the, actually the quality improved as the war went on. <laughs> you don't think much about that. No. Now, you touched on a little bit in the beginning. Tell me more. What should I think about as far as context goes? Okay. Uh, Again, the, the Richmond depots were, you know, thousands and thousands of these were produced. They were the primary garment of, of the Army Northern Virginia. So if you are a soldier portraying, you know, the Confederate Ar Army Northern Virginia, anywhere from late 62 on until the end of the war, uh, this is an excellent jacket for that portrayal. It would be less good and probably completely inappropriate for other Confederate uh, impressions such as the Army Tennessee or the Trans-Mississippi Confederates. And uh, the way we begin to understand the context or the, the appropriateness of when it's okay to wear these, kind of our sources on that, are photographs largely. Uh, Confederates in the field, as in, as in the late war punch bowl f pictures of, of captured Confederate soldiers, um, other studio shots show them wearing these the jackets of this type or this exact type during different times of the war. And that helps us establish when is that going to be appropriate for our portrayal. Outstanding. Dan, thank you again for taking the time with us. I know I learned a lot. I hope you did too. Thank you for watching another episode of Civil War Digital Digest. And if you like this, be sure to like the video, share it out, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.